For this project, we're going to be calculating an HR turnover rate as defined here. We're going to start with three Excel files that show various HR employment data. We're going to load those three files into a SQL Server database. We're going to create a view that combines attributes about all three files. We're then going to connect to that view in Power BI. Here is the data we've connected to. And finally, we're going to create a report that examines turnover percent across various locations and departments for the company. OK, let's take a look at the data sets. The first table we have is employee data. Here we have a period, a location number, a department number, the average employees for that period, and the number of terminations and hires. The thing to know here is that we have three different locations and two different departments, department 10 and 20. Now let's kind of put that off to the side. The next table we have is D location, and that defines the location name. So remember in our main table we have location number. We're going to use this table to look up location number and return the location name. And lastly, we have a D department, which is a department lookup table. So where we have department number here, we have department number here, we will be able to look up the department name. All right, let's go ahead and create the database we'll be using for this project. I've opened SQL Server Management Studio, and I'm going to click on Databases. Now let's right-click, New Database. And let's name it HR Turnover and click OK. And we can see there is our new database that we will be loading data to and working with. OK, let's get the data loaded from Excel into our SQL HR Turnover database. So if you're on Windows, go to Start and navigate to Microsoft SQL Server. There are two import export options. I'm going to choose the 64 bit for my machine. A wizard is going to open up. Let's go to next. The data source is what? Where is it coming from? Microsoft Excel. And let's pick 2016, the latest. Let's browse to that file path. And I'm going to just do these in order. Let's start with D department. Let's click next. Where is the destination? Where do we want to put this data? And we want to put it right here, SQL Server Native Client 11. Is this the server name? Yes. What database do we want to put it on? And our H over turn, turnover, HR turnover database that we just created. Let's click Next. Let's leave this default, copy data, yes. Next. Run immediately, yes. Finish. We can see it going, done, and let's refresh our HR turnover database, go into tables, and we can see there it is. That's what we've just loaded. I'm going to load the other two right now in a similar way. Okay, just as a final check before we go any further, all three tables are loaded to the HR turnover database, and it's important you need to right click and refresh if they're not showing up and expand tables and you should see one two three there's our tables and just to verify that the data is in there let's right click select top 1000 rows and there is our data from the excel file now ultimately i want to create a new view in sql server and then refer to that view in power bi I want to make a connection from Power BI to the view to query the data in to my final reporting. So before we make the view, let's, um, let's just do the query first and kind of explore this. So I'm going to go to New Query, and I want to select star from, say, employment data.
It's, it's making me put the dollar sign after. I guess that's a function of it loading in from Excel. That's fine. So there is all of our data from that table. So we're going to want, let's just think this through, period M. We're going to want the location. We'll go back to that. Average employees and the terms. We're going to want that from the employment data table. But we're going to need to connect this to the other definition tables because I want location name and, lo and department name. Here we have lo location number and department number. I want to join in those other two tables and show the name. So from employment data, join D location on. So let's. Let's name location L on L dot location number equals, and let's name employment data E. I want that to be number equals E dot location number. And now let's add location name into our select statement. Let's see if that works. Okay, we've got period, average employee, terms, and now we have location name. So we also want to join in the department name. So now let's also do a join D, what's the name of that? D department, D. It's just a temp name for the table on D dot department number equals E department number. Whoop. And now let's add department name to our select statement because we have it connected. Run that. Okay, this is going to be our view that we're going to work with. So we've got period, average employees for that period, the number of terms, location name, and department name. What I've done essentially is use my employee data table as the base and then joined on location name and department name based on these common fields between the tables. Joins are a I guess intermediate SQL concept, there's a ton of info out there. It's a critical thing to know. So to turn this into a view, just right above my SQL statement, I just need to say create view v hr turnover. This is what I'm going to name the view as. And when I click execute here, it's going to drop this new view down into my views here. It's going to name it V turnover, and the view is simply going to be the result of this query, which is this data we're seeing down here. So let's go ahead and execute that. Okay, completed successfully. Let's right click and refresh on views. There we go. There is that view we just created. Let's look at it. Right click, select top 1000 rows. There it is. In the next step, we're going to open Power BI and we're going to connect to this view and hook into this data set and make our reports. Okay, let's open a blank Power BI file. It's a blank desktop PBIX in my case. Let's go to Get Data. We're going to choose SQL Server as the source. For the server name, I'm going to copy in what I use to log on to Management Studio. For the database, it's going to going to be HR turnover. I believe I had that all as one word. Let me just check. Nope, I have a space. Space. And we want to use import mode. We want to call the data from the SQL Server view we created and then just basically paste it into Power BI. We don't want to query it each time a user interacts with a report. And that's just a preference for this project. 
Now, the SQL statement we're going to use is select star from the view we, we created, HR. And if I can only remember what I named it, so let's see, there's HR turnover, and we named the view VHR turnover, all one word. VHR turn over. And that's basically saying, give me all columns, all rows from that view we, we created. Let's see if it works. Okay, this is promising. It's showing us a preview of the data. And we don't need to do any transforms because we made the view look exactly like we wanted as far as what we want to pull in. And this preview looks okay. So let's go ahead and load. Okay, we can now see that that data table is present over here in our navigator. Let's go to the data view in Power BI. And we can see here is the data table. And we have the location name and department name, is which is the whole reason we created the SQL view, was to join these two fields onto there. Now, before we start building our report, let's create one DAX measure that we're going to use for the turnover rate. So I'm expanding my columns over here. And I'm going to right click anywhere and just say create new measure. Let's name the measure turnover percent. And let's have it be the sum of terms for any given period divided by the sum of average employee for any given period. Let's multiply all that by 100. Actually, let's not do that. Okay, let's see what happens. So we now have that measure available on our model to pull into any reports. The important thing to know about a DAX measure is that it is um, filter context dependent. So however I filter my final report, this measure will recompute to show the correct results. All right, let's go ahead and make some quick reports here. I'm going to go into reports by clicking this button. I now have a blank canvas. I always like to start with a matrix visual, so I'm going to click matrix over here, expand it up a bit. And I'd like to start with these because they're most similar to a pivot table. You can just drag your field into these wells here and just kind of build it and look at it as you go to see if it's what you want. So let's pull in period M to rows. And we don't want the day, we don't want the quarter, we just want year and month. Let's go ahead and right click, expand all. So we can see the year and then the various months. Let's pull in, just for the sake of completeness, average employees into values. So that's going to be the total employees across all the locations and all the departments. And let's pull in how many terms there were for those same periods. Okay, 50, 1,500. And then let's pull in our turnover percent measure. And let's go ahead and format this turnover percent as a percent. I'm going to click this, go up here, percentage, and I'm going to make it one decimal place. Okay, so we can see our turnover rate was 3.3% in this month, and so on and so forth. Now, this is across all locations and all departments. Let's suppose that the user wants to be able to select various locations and departments. So let's go ahead and click the slicer type visual. Let's back up. something. Okay, slicer. I zoomed in my screen so far, that's why it's looking, it's jumping me around, kind of looking funny. All right, and for our first slicer, we want to be able to slice by location name. Okay, and I want to add a select all option to this slicer. So let's go here, 
Slicer Settings, Selection, Show Select All. Okay. So now if I just click the breezy location, we get these results, gusty, windy. All right, looking good. Now let's pull in the another slicer. So I'm clicking off of everything to free up my selection. Slicer. And let's pull in department name. Again, I'm going to enable the select all. So now we have location and department. All right, that looks good. Now suppose the user wants to see a hierarchy in this table of location, department, and then all the periods. So we can do that by just simply selecting this table, pulling in location name as the highest level, department name as the next level. And we can see for breezy, mechanics, here's all the various months and the turnover. And let's select all here. So you can roll down. So here's Breezy Mechanics, Breezy Sales, Gusty Mechanics, Gusty Sales, and so on and so forth. And you can really get crazy with this. We can easily flip this into bar charts, line charts. Again, I use the matrix visual just to build it kind of as a base case to get this laid out. And you can just easily start selecting these other chart types and Make it look however you want. Again, the point of this tutorial was to show, A, how to get the data into SQL Server, B, create a view, and then C, connect to that view in Power BI. And then here we've made a quick report based on that data. I hope you enjoyed. Let me know of any comments or questions. See you next time.